What up guys? Today I'm gonna to tell you the secrets of how to get the Christmas tree. So spoiler alert, um, maybe this, there are kind of some secrets here because not a lot of people talk about this. I think a lot of people don't really know what the hell that structure actually is, how to make it look good. Um, and But I, I guess the part that's not a secret is there's no quick answer about how to get this, as like a lot of things in bodybuilding. Uh, but hopefully the point of this video is not really just a, hey, here's 30 seconds of how to get this thing. If, in case you're new here, that should be pretty normal for most of you guys. Nothing here is 30 seconds. Um, but kind of breaking down just kind of the nerdery of this as well too. So kind of a cool crossover of, you know, really the purest of bodybuilding meathead stuff is, you know, something we're talking about that just looks cool. We gave a cool nickname, you know, that we've seen on stage for the past 40 years of bodybuilding. And it's just awesome. I mean, that's when people talk about, hey, look at that Christmas tree. People talk about who had the best Christmas tree. People will compare pictures of it. Um, but I wanted to, again, kind of go into a little bit of a nerd here. Uh, nerd session kind of talking about what this is, how you actually can get it, how you can show it better. This will be a video that's actually, I think, helpful not just for normal people. Um, obviously, this won't be helpful for normal people at all, just from a pure observational standpoint, because 99% of people will never uh, be lean enough to actually see this stuff. Uh, so that might be just kind of interesting from a pure educational standpoint. Uh, but if you're a competitor, you'll actually have some very valuable takeaway stuff, especially at the end of this video, as far as how can you actually show this better? Because some of it is getting the prerequisites, that takes a long period of time, but some of it is even guys at the highest level of the sport, I don't think really know how to show this that well. And so the cool part about this video, obviously at the end, you might've seen some clips already, is um, I've got Terrence, so obviously Terrence Ruffin, my training partner, who happens to be less than a week, five days out from the Arnold Classic, so he's legit stage ready. Uh, so it's not too often I get someone with such a good back that's so damn lean that I can actually show this stuff aside from my awesome drawings. You guys can tell me in the comments which is better, my drawings or Terrence's actual back. But anyway, um, so first it's just kind of clarifying some stuff. Uh, number one, what is the Christmas tree? I think that is, again, what are you actually seeing on someone's back that is the Christmas tree? Uh, biggest misconception, number one, is that these are lower back muscles. That's what you're actually seeing is the erector spinae muscles, the ones that are responsible for running all the way along your spine and producing spinal extension when they do a concentric contraction. The thing that should kind of set off some alarms here for the most part, or not alarms, it's probably a little bit dramatic, but if most of the time, obviously, if I have bicep fibers that kind of produce this motion, all the fibers run in that plane. If I've got deltoid muscles that produce this motion, all the fibers run in that plane. So looking at this, again, the kind of the flag should go is that you would expect your erector muscles to run in this plane, which they do. So why is the stuff that we're seeing running this way? It's because those aren't low back muscles that you're seeing. What you're seeing is your thoracolumbar fascia, which is just a really cool sounding name for lat tendon. I honestly don't know why, maybe someone has a decent reason why someone named that thoracolumbar fascia instead of just lat tendon. Maybe it's because some other stuff shares that tendon, maybe is the reason, or possibly like a lot of things in the muscle world, anatomy, physiology world, maybe it's just because it sounds cooler. But basically, it's a fancy name for your lat tendon. Obviously, tendons attach muscles to bone. So obviously, when you have a muscle that pulls and has an action on a bone, it's not actually the muscle co uh, connecting it to, directly to the bone. It's actually the tendon that obviously transfers the force to the bone and pulls it. So first and foremost, hopefully you've learned something already, this stuff that you see is actually a tendon. It's a very cool tendon because like a, uh, there's a few muscles in the body. Obviously, pecs are kind of similar, but not to this dramatic of an effect where it has a very broad origin. So obviously your lat attaches up here somewhere in the humerus, which I didn't draw, to one very small point, and it has a ridiculously broad origin, probably the broadest origin of any muscle in the body. I don't know if that's like a neat Jeopardy thing or something. But the other thing unique about it is that even if you think about pecs, and some people have this a little bit different, normally you don't have a tendon this long as well either, where you can actually see all this. Like obviously a lot of your pec stuff, you know, you might have your tendon up here, but it seems like almost like there's little to no tendon that's actually you can see for the origin attaching your pec to the bone, to your sternum, to your ribs, to your clavicle, whatever, where this is cool because it can be such a long tendon. On the other side of that, as far as genetics are concerned, <laughs> It's actually not cool to have a long tendon, pretty much the same as any muscle in the entire body. The longer a muscle belly and the shorter the tendon, the bigger the capacity of a muscle has to look. Um, so generally for having bigger lats, having a shorter lat tendon is a good thing and having a uh, bigger muscle belly or a longer muscle belly essentially is a good thing. Best example of this is Kai Green, where 
Kai Greene's lats basically insert so low, I joke they like insert below his glutes somehow. You can almost never even see this on Kai because it's literally his lat tendon. Like for some people it might be this long. I might actually see if we can find cool comparisons. Another um, competitor, Hide, um, he has one of the longest lat tendons I've ever seen. <laughs> Now again, when you're actually showing this pose and showing the Christmas tree, that can be an advantage. But as far as any other time, any other pose, just having big lats, it's a disadvantage. So that's a little side nerd, whatever. So now we know what this thing is that we're looking at. And again, when I talk about the broad origin, I just wrote some stuff up here. So as far as we're looking at the lats origin, again, attaches insertions up at the humerus. As far as the borders of this basically is uh, your spinous process, your spinous process, uh, again, part of your vertebra basically up here in the thoracic portion of your rib cage, the thoracic portion of your spine is basically the top. So these are the fibers that really kind of pull this way. And then your lowest portion here, your lower lat fibers are the ones that attach actually to your iliac crest which is part of your pelvis, part of your hip. So again, you have some fibers that run this way, some fibers that run more this way, and you'll see that on actual people where the top of those um, lat tendons kind of run this way. And that's the cool part about the lat tendons as well too, is they can show you basically the direction of where those fibers actually pull to. So where those fibers, so again, some of these fibers actually pull this direction, some of these fibers pull much more this direction. So you want to be able to show this off and look badass. Um, number one tip, here's my bullet points of how to do this. Number one, sadly, kind of the secret for getting abs is get leaner. Um, if you have a lat and it attaches to something and you get lean enough, you will be able to see this. So again, the same as abs, we can go back and forth about size, which we'll get into a little bit. But if someone gets lean enough, even if they've never trained abs in their life, you're still gonna see an ab, at least to some degree. Um, now arguably, again, kind of a side topic, but again, if your abs get bigger and you're the same level of conditioning, can they look better? Most of the time they do look better. So step number one, if you actually want to see this stuff, you can't have stuff on top of it. And so again, that's like glutes, lower back tends to be one of the absolute last areas on people to get lean. So most people need to be at least near stage uh, lean ready to actually be able to see this stuff in the first place. So number one, you wanna be able to see this. You gotta get the fat off of it. You want that really thin looking skin and then you'll be able to see that tendon pressing against the skin. So again, in case that wasn't clear, again, your erector muscles will run more this way. The reason this looks this way is because that's how your lat fibers actually run this way, this way, this way. And when they contract, they're going to like same as any muscle. So again, if I relax my abs, it should kind of make sense now. Same as any muscle, same as any tendon. When my abs are relaxed, you don't see them as much. When I contract, it's actually a combination of how that muscle actually attaches to the skin. So how that lat actually attaches to the skin. And to a certain degree when they contract, how they actually kind of press against the skin as well too. So if you're lean enough and you contract your lats, which in turn will contract and actually create tension, not contract, but to a certain degree contract, create tension against that lat tendon, you will be able to see them. Now, that's not to say that other things can't help you potentially see them more. So the next one here is get bigger lats. Now, the reality is um, how much of a difference this will make. I'm not positive. This is an interesting one, but we do know for sure as muscles get bigger, the, the tendons that they attach to also get bigger. So without a doubt, if your lats get bigger, especially a dramatic amount, and I'm not saying, you know, someone that's put on one pound of lat tissue, whatever that looks like, is gonna have a dramatic effect. But someone that's gone from 150 pounds on stage to 250 pounds on stage that has dramatically bigger lats, your lat tendon will be significantly bigger, which should in turn produce a different look. So step number one, you wanna see this get leaner. Step number two, get some bigger lats. And these basically, these cords, these fibers that run across here will just look bigger. The divisions will uh, be deeper and you'll just be able to see more separation stuff. Again, with the prerequisite of get leaner first. Tip number three, get bigger erectors. So this one might be said, you just said those aren't erectors that I see. Well, the reality is erectors are right underneath that, right? So that's the next tissue that is right under that thoracolumbar fascia is erectors. Now, if I'm having anything, again, I'm trying to think of a decent analogy, but if I have something right against like the inside of a shirt and you wanted to see it more, would pressing against it be able to see what that is? Something better than a shirt. I don't know, saran wrap or something, whatever. But basically, if I have something underneath something, and I push it out, you will be able to see more of that. So even though getting bigger erectors won't actually be able to see those big erectors anymore, if the erectors are bigger, they're gonna push against that lat tendon more, theoretically showing them off a little bit better. So that's why that's tip number three. I don't know how much of a difference, honestly, that would make. This is something where hopefully you can kind of guess this isn't, there's no studies to show this or something. It's basically purely visual effect. Uh, but I would have to guess, again, if you go in the right order, get leaner, get bigger lats, in turn, get bigger lat tendons, and you get some bigger erectors, 
then you're gonna be in a position where maybe they actually press out a little bit more and you show them a little bit more. These two might actually be flip-flop three and four. Number four, we're gonna go into a minute of me actually talking with Terrence. But number four, and this is where uh, most everybody, and especially even pros in my opinion, will actually mess up, is learn how to pose properly. And so the biggest thing for posing properly is how do we show this area as much as possible? So if we have less of this area showing, you're gonna have less stuff to show. If you have more of this area showing, you'll have more stuff to show. I know that's not rocket science, but people still mess it up. And then from there as well too, again, this is the one I kind of touched on up here. You have to be able to contract your lats. So this is actually a cool thing as well too. I used to say that a couple times I've actually been lean enough to see this, is I could actually really say, how well am I contracting my lats, right? That's a very interesting muscle, because during training, obviously you can't see your lats for the most part. You are kind of guessing totally by feel, and obviously feel is somewhat important. You don't wanna to get too caught up on feel, but obviously if you're doing back stuff and you don't feel a lat at any point in time, you know, you wanna try and change or um, adjust something. So the cool thing is when you're actually lean, you can get in a mirror and you can actually go through different positions and see the difference of, if I just pull my arm straight back, you won't see that lat tendon contract because your lat can't pull your arm past your body. So lats can do something like this. Lats can't do that part. And so again, when you actually get in and mess around, you can see all those things where it's again, okay, here's me rowing, looking in the mirror. I see nothing happening down here. Here's me actually driving my upper arm into my side, driving my humerus down towards that iliac crest and everything lights and pops up. So it's a very cool visual feedback probably one of the most helpful tools ever actually to help you feel your lats and have some positive reinforcement that am I actually contracting them properly? Obviously the issues with all that are you have to do steps one and two um, to make sure that you're actually seeing those step one more than anything to actually see that occur. So it's, uh, it's one of the most powerful training tools to see are you doing your lats properly, contracting them, getting your upper arm in the right position, focusing on the right feel. But unless you get you know stage ready lean, it's not a tool that most people can utilize. So. Uh, you'll see in the video talking about, I talk about how to actually show a lot of real estate here. And I also uh, talk about a couple things, but really whatever that means to you, whatever you do to make sure you're actually contracting your lats because it's a lot more than just driving your elbows back. So this is the Bob Ross of bodybuilding parts. So hopefully you guys found this mildly to moderately interesting. And uh, now we'll go to the very interesting part where we use a uh, Olympia's competitors back uh, a couple days out from a show to show all this actually in action. All right, guys, so Terrence is gracious enough to lend us uh, arguably one of the best backs in all of bodybuilding and some stage-ready conditioning to show us something really freaking cool. Um, so like the first half of the video kind of demonstrate a little bit more about what are the prerequisites to be able to actually even show the Christmas tree. Um, and then this is gonna be kind of a little bit more of an advanced video slash just obviously hopefully find this nerdy and interesting as well too. Uh, but I do find this to be something that even advanced guys, meaning bodybuilders on the pro stage, still actually mess up posing on this because one, I don't know if they know the best body position to actually show what they're trying to show. But then two, I don't know if they even know um, what muscles to contract as far as what will actually show that Christmas tree, that thoracolumbar fascia best. So I'm gonna have Terrence just hit his transition real quick first, how he would normally do it, which is pretty much a good way to show that Christmas tree, thoracolumbar fascia. So this again is the whole area that we're talking about here, all these kind of more horizontal striations. I'll let Terrence relax a little bit. So one of the number one mistakes I think people do is because they think it's erectors that they're showing, they try and actually flex their erectors, meaning they extend their erectors. And so the main reason, one, you're contracting the wrong muscle, contracting your erectors won't show at all, but two, you're also limiting space. So literally, if you have the distance between the top of your hips and basically where the muscle belly of the lat is, if you extend, this gets closer together. So you're literally just showing less stuff. So I'll show Terrence if he just kind of overextends, really does this kind of chest up type thing as he pulls back. So as he does this, you can see you're not even seeing this stuff quite as much and this space is smaller. So even if he was contracting that stuff a little bit better, he's actually not showing off what he wants to show with as much real estate. So what most people would benefit from is actually, and they can mess around with how much, but being a little bit more spinal flexed or a little bit more rounded. So they actually have their lumbar spine a little bit more rounded, and they even have kind of their upper back rounded just a teeny bit. So I'll have Terrence show that difference there. So even just a little bit more rounded. 
and then pulling back and down with those lats. And you can see now we've literally just got more space and we can actually see what's going on here a little bit more. And the last thing I'll just say where people mess up, so one, people mess up the spine position like we just demonstrated, but then two, they don't actually think about contracting their lats. I think a lot of people just think they're trying to do like almost like an upper back row. They're trying to get their elbows like up and back as far as possible. And for 99% of human beings, the only exception might be like Ronnie Coleman or Kai Green. If you get your upper arm past your body, your lats actually not contracting. All this stuff is contracting. So most people need to imagine where that lat attaches. And if you don't have a good connection to your lat, it's not just a back thing. Thing, it's like your humor is kind of pulling back and down. So Terrence knows how to contract his lats. So here his upper arm just stops kind of right at the side of his body. And even if it goes past a little bit, he's always pulling down, always contracting those lats. And you'll see that's what gets that lat tendon actually popping and showing. Whereas if you drive him way past your body, you're going to get to a point where that lat actually relaxes. Why? Well, give the example of Ronnie Coleman or Kai Green. They're the only people that their back has so much density this way. I literally think they're incapable of actually getting their upper arm past <laughs> their lat tissue. Because some people, you'll see the transition where Ronnie, he looks like he has his elbows pretty far back and one of the most famous shots ever, we'll get that put in there. Trevor's gonna put that in there for me, but I believe that's a perb or an all shot. Um, and again, the exception for him is he can get his arm so far back, his lats are probably still contracting. So that's it, Terrence, thank you for letting us use your backside appropriately and uh, show off some pretty cool muscle nerd shit. And again, hopefully um, no other pros are taking notes. So they don't know how to show off their back as well um, through that transition is there as well too, but some cool little posing tips to, to recap on that. Again, little posterior pelvic tilt, a little bit of a rounded spine and make sure you're actually contracting and pulling your lats down. And if you have the prerequisites to show that Christmas tree, that thoracolumbar fascia, that's gonna be one of the best ways to show it. Until the next time, don't forget to do the YouTube thing, like, subscribe, share with some friends, and all that good stuff.